Hey, good afternoon viewers. <coughs> this is the third class of the applied science for the first or second semester of the uh, polytechnic students. Well, in our previous discussions, we came to know the meaning of a dimension, what is the dimensional equation, how to write the a dimensional equation for a physical quantity, what are the uh, steps to be followed while writing the dimensional equation of a physical quantity, at the same time uh, what are the advantages of a dimensional equation, what are the limitations of a dimensional equation. Uh, today let us concentrate our interest on measurements. So, now what is a measurement, why it is essential, so essential, even uh, in the field of a medical, you can, uh, you can say a medical field, it is entirely depending upon the uh, living things, say biology. In the medical field also, doctor will give much more importance to the measurement, I mean, so commonly we know, so measure the <coughs> Uh, sugar quantity in a human being, measure the blood pressure of a patient, uh, measure the uh, different uh, secretion of the glands in a human being. So, what is the advantage? If you have a correct figure of the measurement of any uh, secretion or a glucose quantity or blood pressure, any other physical quantities, doctor will decide with what disease the patient will suffer. Once if the doctor know what is the problem, then he can be able to find the solution. I mean, even in the medical field also, there is a importance for the measurement. So, but in uh, science and technology, measurement is the part and parcel of the work. So, what is a measurement actually? Measurement is nothing but a measure, measure the actual value of a quantity. What the care we should take? So, we may not measure the actual value of a any physical quantity because, so while measuring there may be some errors are incorporated in our measurement. So, if there are errors are there in our measurement, then it may affect the result of any experiment or any other work. So, if the measurement is not correct, then the result is also not correct. So, finally, we say that that result is not in close contract, close agreement with the so experimentally found value. So, what you did may be a error. So, once again error is a one more important topic, one more broad topic. So, within the limitation, within my limitations, I may not explain what is error, what are the different types of error, how to minimize the error, how errors are incorporated in our experiment even. So, there is a no scope for your practical class and also theory class also, but anyhow. So, measurement is not accurate means there are few errors may incorporated in your measurement. So, then in physics, the measurement means accuracy. So, you have to measure accurately. So, accuracy means, so how close our measurement is there. I repeat, how close our measure, how close our measurement is there to the actual value of a physical quantity. With only naked eye, we cannot say. So, the actual value of a physical quantity. For example, suppose you can say, what is the length of this pen? So, roughly you can say 5 or 6 centimeters, 7 centimeters like that. So, what is the actual length of this pen means? So, you say I need one scale. In, this, in a scale, how, what are the convention, conve what is the convention to be followed to measure it means? So, we have a pen, so we have a scale. We want, now we want to know what is the length of this pen. So, our pen has two ends. So, what to generally what we did is, we connect one end of the pen to the zeroth division of the scale, another free end of this article stands on which division that itself is a length of this physical quantity, I mean length of this pen. Is it clear? So, this is the convention we follow. So, while following this convention, there may be a one practical problem. For example, simply I wrote the scale here. So, the scale may be like this. So, it may be a centimeter scale 0, 
वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव दिस इज वन सेंटीमीटर वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव दिस इज टू सेंटीमीटर द स्केल गोस ऑन लाइक दिस सपोज वन एंड ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट इज कनेक्टेड टू द जीरो डिविजन ऑफ द स्केल अनादर एंड स्टैंड एक्सैक्टली ऑन दिस डिविजन यू कैन से लेंथ ऑफ दिस पेन इज वन पॉइंट वन सेंटीमीटर और इट इज ए इलेवन मिलीमीटर और इट इज ए इलेवन मिलीमीटर सो इंस्टेड ऑफ दिस सपोज देर मे बी अ पॉसिबिलिटी लाइक सो वी हैव अनादर आर्टिकल whose one length is connected to zeroth division where other length so coincides between these two divisions so i mean it is 1 1 1.5 1.6 1.7 here what is length so i hope you may understand the problem you have a pen so you want to measure the length of the pen so zeroth division is coincided by one end of the pen another free end stands on so between 1.6 and 1.7 cm of a scale now the question is what is the length of this article so most of the students in my classroom or laboratory classes said that so it is 1.65 cm sir now i just continue my question how can you justify this answer the student will say so the you are here 1.65 cm it is greater than 1.6 cm less than 1.7 cm therefore length of this object is 1.65 cm most of the students more than 90% of the students so say the answer when we face the problem practically while measuring the length of the given object now the question is is this one is a correct answer so you can, your justification still like that so the length definitely greater than 1.6 with our naked eye only we can say it is greater than 1.6 but less than 1.7 therefore it is 1.65 cm now my question is so suppose it may be 1.61 cm why not it is 1.61 cm my justification is still 1.61 cm is greater than 1.6 at the same time it is less than 1.7 cm then why not it is 1.62 cm 1.63 cm 1.64 cm 1.65 cm 1.66 cm 1.67 cm 1.68 cm 1.69 cm so observe these bunch of values all the values are definitely greater than 1.6 cm but the less than 1.7 cm why your answer will be restricted only for 1.65 cm why not the rest of the seven other values seven uh, eight other values means you don't have a answer here all these values the length is greater than 1.6 cm at the same time it is less than 1.7 cm in all these cases now if you write 1.65 cm it may be correct but it should not be correct i mean you just observe only so out of 9 this is only one chance in eight of the other circumstances it may not be a correct so what you take with l is equal to 1.65 for 1.65 cm it is may not be a correct length of the given object this is the practical problem so i hope you may came to know how roughly we finish the situation when we face the situation in measuring the length like this i mean some error should be incorporated so to minimize this error to minimize this error to take the accurate value of the length so length in the form of the so distance in the form of the thickness in the form of the area in the form of the radius etc so 
there are few measuring instruments are designed few measuring instruments are designed which are called as the so vernier calipers screw gauge spherometer traveling microscope etc now let us concentrate so the different types of the measuring instruments <coughs> <clears throat> now to have a accurate measurement of a length with respect to your syllabus you are going to concentrate two different measuring instruments one is the so vernier calipers another one is a screw gauge now before going to know what is the essential of having a vernier calipers so how the vernier calipers is i want to show the actual instrument so by observing that instrument you can came to know uh, the vernier calipers this is the model of the calipers model of the vernier I will put the calipers there. This is the model of the vernier. Before going to know, before going to observe the model of the calipers, let us try to concentrate our interest on so vernier calipers. So now what is vernier calipers means it is a special type of a measuring instrument so which is used to which is used to uh, which is used to measure very small dimensions i mean length thickness diameter radius etc this is the actual vernier calipers every student should go through this apparatus in the applied science laboratory so at least in two experiments so please try to concentrate your interest on so different parts of the vernier calipers i will explain briefly because the time is very short for me so now let us concentrate how the vernier calipers is there this is the this is the measuring instrument invented by the pyrie vernier in the 16th century itself please note that uh, so he is a french mathematician pyrie vernier in the year i think uh, 1630 or something else in the 16th century so he invented a special instrument call it as a slide calipers or vernier calipers so before going to know how to make use of this vernier calipers i will explain different parts of this measuring instrument briefly so let us concentrate this is a rectangular metallic strip this is the strip made by a metal since which is in the form of a rectangle that's why this we call it as a rectangular metallic strip observe the lower edge of this rectangular metallic strip there is a scale which is graduated in centimeter this scale plays a major role so in the measurement of dimension of the any uh, physical quantity like length diameter thickness etc that's why this scale we referred as a so main scale so in a vernier calipers we have a rectangular metallic strip on its lower edge it has be, there is a scale which is graduated in a centimeter which plays a major role and it is called as a main scale observe here so these two portions they are called they are in the form of a jaws our jaws only so that's why these two are called as the jaws so these two portions are called as the lower jaws these two portions are called as the upper jaws since this jaw is unable to move with respect to this reason this jaw is called as a fixed jaw so since this jaw can able to move either in the forward direction or in the backward direction that's why this jaw is called as a movable jaw observe here along with the movable jaw there is a one scale is uh, attached to the movable jaw there is a scale attached along with the movable jaw this scale it is a main scale it is a secondary scale it is 
it is a secondary scale. So, or even it you can call it as a movable scale. Since this scale and the instrument is invented by a Pyri Vernier in honor of his name, this scale is called as a Vernier scale. This scale is called as a Vernier scale. So, how many scales we have in this measuring instrument is there are two. One is the main scale, another one is the vernier scale. So, now all we left the portion of this strip, the strip which is there behind this rectangular metallic bar means uh, it the strip the function of this strip is which is used to find the depth of the given object. Suppose the given object is a hollow one. I hope you may remember the uh, different parts briefly of this uh, vernier calipers. A rectangular metallic strip, main scale, fixed jaw, movable jaw, upper jaws. So, the strip behind the uh, rectangular metallic strip. So, this function is to find the thickness of the given object. Since in this measuring instrument, we have two scales. So, if you make the measurement of any physical quantity by making use of this vernier calipers, we should make use of these two scales simultaneously. So, to make use of these two scales simultaneously, we should need one mathematical equation. Say that mathematical equation is in the form of TR, I mean abbreviation for total reading, which is equal to MSR plus C V D into L C. So, by making use of the, this equation, we can know the complete uh, measurement of the given physical quantity using this instrument. MSR means abbreviation for main scale reading, C V D means coinciding vernier division and L C means least count. So, let us uh, uh, forget about the MSR and CVD. So, later we came to know how can we make use of, how can we measure the M main scale and uh, vernier scale readings. What is LC? The abbreviation LC as I say LC means least count. With respect to literature, you can say least means minimum, count means gauge. So, what is the least count means? The minimum measurement made by any measuring instrument by making use of that instrument is called as the least count of that measuring instrument. Please note that whether you are measuring instrument may be a balance, calipers, screw gauge, spirometer, microscope, telescope, etc. Every measuring instrument has its own least count. So, the best example is in a meter scale, you can measure at least 0.1 centimeter or 1 millimeter. you can measure 0.1 centimeter or 1 mil. So, I mean this is the minimum possible measurement made by anyone by making use of a centimeter scale or a millimeter scale. So, if a physical quantity less than this magnitude from that measuring instrument, so we cannot measure it perfectly. So, that is why any lowest measurement that can be measured by that instrument is called, is called as the least count of that measuring instrument. Um, one more best example with respect to your knowledge is what is the minimum time measured by us by making use of our watches. So, it, it may not be a hours, it may not be a minutes, it may be a, it should be a seconds. That too, one second is the lowest possible measurement made by our watch. Even fraction of a second can also we can measure, but with respect to device what we have, we can measure time. So, at up to one second only, at least one second only, not less than that. Therefore, one second is the least count of the watch, 0 0.1 centimeter is the least count of the centimeter scale like that. I mean, every measuring instrument 
possesses its own uh, least count. The magnitude of the least count so may vary from one measuring instrument to another measuring instrument. Suppose if the least count of the any two measuring instruments are same, it is accidentally, but there is no any specific convention such that every measuring instrument should have a same least count like that. Every measuring instrument should have a least count, their magnitude from uh, the magnitude of the least count may vary from one measuring instrument to another measuring instrument that depend upon the nature of the apparatus. Here, since <coughs> Our measuring instrument vernier calipers has more than one scale. So, definitely it has got a least count then we should measure the least count of the measuring instrument. Then how can we measure the least count of the measuring instrument means? So, here by definition you can say least count of the vernier calipers basic definition it is the difference between one main scale division and one vernier scale division. This is the definition of this is the uh, equation used by basic definition of the least count for a vernier calipers. 1 MSD means value of 1 MSD, 1 VSD means value of 1 VSD. Now, the question is you can say what is the value of 1 MSD because I will explain uh, earlier main scale is graduated in centimeter. Since it is graduated in centimeter, the value of 1 MSD is definitely 1 mm or 0 0.1 centimeter. So, now while explaining the different parts of the vernier calipers, I never say your vernier calipers is graduated in centimeter or millimeter or meter like that. The fact is <coughs> the vernier scale simply has the 10 divisions. So, this is the model of a vernier, please concentrate. So, so this is the vernier scale, <coughs> this is your main scale, this is the vernier scale, this is the main scale which is graduated in centimeter or millimeter, this is the vernier. So, please note that this is simply a model of a vernier scale, at, but not the actual vernier, it is a model. Then this is the main scale, this is the vernier scale. So, this main scale as I explained in the original uh, instrument, it is graduated in centimeter, but uh, here also you can imagine that this is also graduated in terms of a centimeter. Then what about this vernier scale means simply divisions are marked, simply divisions are marked. Now the question is, <coughs> sir, is the divisions are marked abruptly? or is there any definition or any principle is to be followed while uh, framing the lines on the vernier scale? Definitely my answer is yes. By following the principle of the vernier, this scale has been designed. So, now the question is your vernier scale is not graduated in centimeter or millimeter or any other units. Then how it can be lines are, how the lines are marked on the vernier scale? Lines are marked on the vernier scale simply by following the principle of the vernier, by following the principle of the vernier. by following the principle of vernier. Now, the question is immediate question is what is the principle of vernier? You see just the chain links. So, in the practical examination and the practical class also you came to know in vernier calipers there are two scales. One is the main scale, another one is the vernier scale. So, your examiner may ask with what unit your main scale is graduated, your answer is centimeter or millimeter both are same. So, what about your vernier scale? Your vernier scale is either graduated in centimeter or millimeter. So, you can be gets confused, but without any date you can say simply divisions are marked on the vernier scale. So, how the divisions are marked? Is there any principle or definition? Definitely your answer should be by following the principle of the vernier, vernier scale has been graduated. So, now what is the principle of the vernier means? In a single line I want to say the principle of the vernier is the magnitude of n number of VSD which is equivalent to, so the magnitude of n minus 1 MSD, this is the principle of the vernier mathematically. 
n v s d which is equal to n n v s d which is equal to n minus 1 m s d is the so principle of the vernier n v s d is equal to n minus for example for instance more practical that is in quite general suppose you are in your vernier scale there are 10 vernier scale divisions are there so according to principle of the vernier these 10 divisions on the vernier scale equivalent to 10 minus 1 which is equal to 9 m s d for instance you can see here <coughs> so here there are 10 vernier scale divisions so these 10 vernier scale divisions so just to match with the 9 main scale divisions so 10 number of v s d should match us with the 9 number of m s d if there are 20 number of vernier scale divisions are there 20 VSD is equal to 20 minus 1 that is 19 MSD we call it as a so 20 VSD is equal to 19 MSD in general the principle of vernier is n VSD is equal to n minus 1 MSD now the question is least count how can we calculate so least count is equal to 1 MSD minus here we have n number of vernier scale divisions is equal to n minus 1 divisions of the main scale one minute <coughs> therefore you can write value of one vernier scale divisions which is equal to n minus 1 divided by n msd i simply transfer so n to the right hand side it will coming to the denominator of the right hand side right so now instead of 1 vsd i can replace it by n minus 1 divided by n msd now you just take n as a lcm it is n into 1 is n minus of n minus 1 so put msd as a common factor outside the bracket now this is equal to <coughs> n open the bracket minus n minus of minus it is plus 1 divided by n minus n gets cancelled with the plus n so besides this there is a msd therefore lc least count is equal to 1 by n msd so more conveniently you can say 1 msd divided by n this is the definition for for to know the least count of the given measuring instrument that is vernier calipers <coughs> what is uh, the least count of the vernier calipers is it is a ratio from value of one main scale division to the number of divisions on the vernier scale so usually value of 1 msd with respect to your instrument is 0 0.1 centimeter number of divisions on the vernier are 10 so 0 0.1 divided by 10 it is 0 0.01 centimeter is the least count of the given vernier calipers once if you measure the least count of the given calipers it is constant for every reading you may not measure the least count of the instrument now this is the way of having a, a way of knowing the least count of the uh, vernier calipers i hope you may understand you just remember how can you calculate the least count of the vernier calipers is it is a ratio from value of one main scale division to the number of divisions on the vernier scale then what is the principle of the vernier is the magnitude of n number of vernier scale divisions should be equal to n minus 1 divisions on the main scale so if you remember these two concepts then let us try to know how to make the measurement by using a vernier calipers <coughs> Now, as I explained, we have the two scales, they are main scale and the vernier scale. How to make use of the main scale while measure, how to take the reading of the main scale? So, <coughs> suppose if you want to find the thickness of this pen, 
So, arrange the free distance between the fixed jaw and the movable jaw. Hold the object like this. You just hold the object like this. Move the movable jaw till the object is firmly gripped. Once when the object is firmly gripped, note down 0 to division of the vernier scale coincides with which division on the main scale. So, the convention to be follow to know the main scale reading in case of the vernier calipers is when the object is firmly gripped between the fixed jaw and the movable jaw, the 0 to division on the vernier scale coincides with which division on the main scale that is a so main scale reading. Suppose <coughs> your main scale reading is uh, 2.5 centimeter. So, MSR is equal to 2.5 centimeter. Without disturbing that position, you should know the CVD. Without disturbing that position, you should know the CVD. Then what is the convention to be followed to know the CVD means when the object is firmly gripped. So, after knowing the main scale reading, out of the 10 divisions on the vernier scale, out of the 10 divisions on the vernier scale, any one of the division is best to coincides with the any other division on the main scale. I want to repeat, whenever the object is firmly gripped after note downing the main scale reading without disturbing that position. So, check out of the 10 divisions on the vernier scale, any one of the division is best to coincides with the main scale. I mean it seems to be a single line that division is called as a coinciding vernier division. So, here you can easily came to know by using a model of this vernier. So, you can just imagine that this is the fixed jaw, this is the movable jaw. When the movable jaw is in comes in contact with the main scale, <coughs> when the movable when the movable jaw <coughs> in between the movable jaw and the fixed jaw, if the object is gripped, situation is like this. So, uh, like this. So, this is in millimeter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, 10 millimeter or 1 centimeter is the main scale. I mean, 0 to division of the vernier coincides with which division on the main scale is the main scale reading. 0 when the object is firmly gripped between the fixed jaw and the movable jaw, the 0 to division of the main scale coincides with which division on the main scale it is 10 mm or 1 centimeter without disturbing this position. So, out of the 10 divisions, any one of the division is best to coincides with the main scale division. Start with the 0, 0 itself is best to coincides. In such a case, 0 itself is a main scale division, 0 itself is a CVD coinciding vernier division. So, I repeat the convention how to take the main scale reading. When the object is firmly gripped between the fixed jaw and the movable jaw, so what is 0 to division of the vernier scale coincides with which division on the main scale that is called as main scale reading without disturbing that position. So, uh, any one of the 10 division out of the 10 divisions including 0 in your main scale, in your vernier scale, any one division is best to coincides with the main scale division. So, it seems to be a single line. Here you see, so here 0 itself is a CVD because 0 is best to coincides with one division on the main scale. Suppose it is like that, 0 is not coincides, first division is not coincides, second is not, third is not, fourth is not, fifth is not, sixth is exactly coincides. 6 VSD, 6 centimeter is not valuable where 6 centimeter is not valid because it is simply divisions you can say 6 VSD, 6 numbers that is all. One more practical problem is there while measuring the length of the or any other dimension of the uh, dimension using a vernier calipers. When the object is firmly gripped while measuring the main scale reading, the 0 to division of the uh, vernier scale lies between any two divisions as I explain what is accuracy. <coughs> 
So, here you can say it is greater than 1.2 centimeter less than 1.3 centimeter. Under this convention, under this situation, you have to take lower number because you are writing the equation that lower number itself is a main scale plus something. So, lower number plus something by adding plus something. So, you can get you will get the exactly remaining answer. I hope you may understand the convention is whenever the 0th division of the vernier scale lies between any two divisions on the main scale always you have to take the lower number as a main scale reading. So, you have to take the CVD as I explained earlier. One more convention you have to take while measuring the CVD. While taking the uh, CVD when 0th division coincides with the main scale division, 10th division is also coincides. Please do not take 10 is CVD. So, your journey should starts with 0. You are going to measure fraction of a centimeter or fraction of a millimeter. So, if you take 10 divisions, 10 number as a CVD, the entire reading will collapses. So, you see here when the 0th division is exactly coincides, 10th division is also exactly coincides. Your CVD should be 0 only, but not 10. So, these two convention you have to follow. In case of a uh, reading taken for main scale, whenever the 0th division of the vernier scale lies between any two divisions, you have to take lower number as a main scale reading. So, while taking the CVD, when 0th division coincides on the main scale division, 10th division of the vernier scale is also coincides. So, take only 0th division. If you take 10, so you may not get a correct reading. <coughs> now, the thing is this is the meaning of a least count, how to take the main scale reading, how to take the CVD. So, <coughs> then rest of the job is very easy. Suppose <coughs> in case of your instrument CVD may be 7, least count is 0 0.01 centimeter. Then how to take the uh, total reading is MSR is 2.5 centimeter, CVD is 7 units and LC is 0 0.01 centimeter. Please concentrate your interest on main scale reading unit and the least count unit, <coughs> both should be same. <coughs> if MSR, if you are expressed in terms of a centimeter, your least count is also in terms of a centimeter. If it is in a millimeter, it should also in millimeter. Then rest of the job is very easy. It is 2.5 plus it is 0 0.07 centimeter. It is 2.57 centimeter is the length of the given object. Observe here. 2.57 in the ordinary scale, you may take it as a 2.55. The situation seen is the 0th division of the object, uh, as the one end of the object is coincides 0th division of the scale, another end lies between 2.5 and 2.6. In such a case, you can say it is greater than 2.5 centimeter, less than 2.6 centimeter, therefore, our answer is 2.55. But actually, you can came to know it is 2.57 centimeter. So, which can be get by making use of a specially designed instrument for facing uh, this practical problems, one of it is vernier calipers. Now, the question is, is there no any error in your instrument? <coughs> Please note that every measuring instrument, if it is a measuring instrument, there may be a sort of errors incorporated with that. So, your calipers is also not free from error. How to note down the error in case of the calipers is arrange the calipers such that your uh, fixed jaw is in com comes in contact with the movable jaw. Observe here whenever the fixed jaw is comes in contact with the movable jaw. If the 0th division of the vernier scale exactly coincides with the 0th division of the main scale in your instrument there is no error. I repeat. So, how to identify the error in case of a vernier calipers? Arrange the calipers such that the fixed jaw is comes in contact with the movable jaw. Under this circumstance, the zeroth division of the vernier scale is exactly coincides with the zeroth division of the main scale. In that instrument, there is no error. 
So this is the one of the possible uh, vernier calipers. One more type of the vernier calipers you may get such that whenever the fixed jaw comes in contact with the movable jaw, the zeroth division of the vernier scale is right side the zeroth division of the main scale. I repeat zeroth division on the vernier scale is right side the zeroth division of the main scale. In such a case, error is positive. This is the second possibility. One more possibility is under this circumstance, the zeroth division of the vernier scale is left side the zeroth division of the main scale. Under such circumstance, <coughs> so the error is negative. So, how to note down the error? Zero error in case of a vernier calipers is nothing but a CVD into so LC under that circumstance, CVD into LC. Therefore, correct reading, correct reading is nothing but a so actual measurement plus or minus 0 error. Do not concentrate much more on the error of the vernier calipers because uh, while uh, uh, doing experiments in the science lab, your calipers may be 99 percent of your calipers may be free from the error. So, this is the brief introduction on what is the vernier calipers, how it can be used. So, what are the conventions to be followed to find the least count in case of the vernier calipers and error corrections etcetera. So, what are the experiments on that means you are going to have the two experiments by making use of a vernier calipers. One is how to find the volume of a given solid cylinder. <coughs> how to find the volume of a given solid cylinder by using a vernier calipers. So, this may be this you have to see this is a solid cylinder. How can you measure the volume of this cylinder by using a vernier calipers? The formula used to do the same is V is equal to pi d square L divided by 4 c c atwa c m cube. <coughs> The formula used to find the volume of the given solid cylinder is pi d square L by 4 cc, <coughs> where d is the mean diameter of the given cylinder, L is the mean length of the given cylinder. Once again, I use the word mean diameter and mean length, this mean or average means. So, it by using a mean length or mean diameter, it minimizes the error if there is any in your measurement. Now, the question is to measure volume of this cylinder only diameter and length are sufficient. So, to measure diameter and length of this cylinder, so why should we use the least curve, why should we use the vernier calipers, why not one ordinary scale? My answer is our interest intention is only to have a accurate measurement. So, to get roughly, so you can make use of any ordinary instruments. If you want exact accurate value of the volume, you can making use of a some prescribed measuring instrument. One of it is vernier calipers or slide calipers. So, one more experiment you have to conduct by making use of this vernier calipers that is find the volume of the given hollow cylinder. It is a hollow object hollow cylinder by using a vernier calipers. So, the formula used is V is equal to <coughs> pi d square minus small d square divided by into L divided by 4. So, again C C pi into capital D square minus small d square into L divided by 4. So, 
instead of having only d square, we have d square minus small d square, where capital D represents the external diameter of this cylinder and small d represents the internal diameter of this cylinder. By measuring it is external diameter and internal diameter. So, and also length of this cylinder, you can uh, uh, came to know what is the volume of this cylinder. So, this, uh, these are the two simple experiments, so which are conducted by yourself in the applied science laboratory. Now, one more measuring instrument you have to study, it is a screw gauge. <coughs> one more measuring instrument you have to study under this chapter is screw gauge. Here, <coughs> when compared to a ordinary scale, this uh, vernier calipers is more accurate. When compared to this vernier calipers, so this uh, screw gauge is also more accurate. Before going to know how to make use of the screw gauge, I will explain uh, by using a actual screw gauge, the different parts of the screw gauge. This is the screw gauge or you even uh, uh, it is called as a micrometer screw gauge. So, I will explain the uh, important parts very briefly. It consists of a U shaped metallic frame. So, a metal which is in the form of a letter U that is why it is called as a U shaped metallic frame. So, this one, one, one end of the U shaped metallic frame you can call it as a anvil or stud or even it is also referred as a fixed plug. Another end is connected to one of the hollow cylinder. So, so another end is connected to the hollow cylinder. On the hollow cylinder you can observe one horizontal line may be present on the on this one horizontal line may be present that line you call it as a so pitch line or base line of a pitch, we call it as a pitch line or base line of a pitch. So, on the pitch line there is a scale which is graduated in millimeter, on the pitch line there is a scale which is graduated in millimeter. Since that scale is there on the pitch line that is why it is called as a pitch scale, there is a scale which is graduated in millimeter and it is there on the pitch line that is why it is called as a pitch scale. Observe here, so this portion is called as a head of the screw. So, inside this hollow cylinder a screw works, you just observe the movable tip of the screw, the tip moves forward while rotating this portion, the tip moves backward while rotating this portion. The motion of this tip of the screw is controlled by this portion, that is why this is called as a head of the screw. <coughs> observe this beveled edge portion, once again there is a scale once again there is a scale which is in the form of a circle, which is there in the form of a circle that is why this scale is called as a circular scale. Since this circular scale is in a close agreement or attached with the head of the screw that is why this scale is called as a head scale. Again when compared to your vernier calipers, here also we have two scales, there there is a main scale and vernier scale, here there is a pitch scale and head scale. If we have the two scales, those two scales should be used simultaneously while taking a measurement of a physical quantity, we need one mathematical equation. That mathematical equation here you can write TR abbreviation for total reading which is PSR in PSR plus HSR plus or minus ZC into LC. This is the equation used to find the so dimension of a given object. <coughs> by making use of a screw gauge. PSR it is a pitch scale reading, okay. 
एच एस आर् इट इस ए हेड स्केल रीडिंग ट्रई टू नो हौ टू मेजर द हेड स्केल रीडिंग जेड सी मीन जीरो करेक्शन जीरो करेक्शन मीन वाट सो यू हेव टू करेक्ट द एर वाट ईज देर इन युवर इंस्ट्रूमेंट सो ऐस ई एक्सप्लेन अर्लियर एवरी इंस्ट्रूमेंट मे हेव इट्स ओन एरर before making use of that instrument so if there is any error first to you have to correct it then you just proceed with the further part of the business then how to know what is the error is there with your screw gauge so there is a convention what is that convention is so how to hold the screw gauge is you should hold the one of your hand with the u shaped metallic frame u shaped metallic frame another end with the head of the screw don't touch in between these two portions because you may not get a correct reading so now rotate so movable tip of the screw unless until a ratchet sound has been heard or it should be movable tip of the screw is in close agreement with the so fixed plug under this circumstance if the base line of the pitch if the base line of the pitch or pitch line exactly coincides with the zero division on the head scale then your screw gauge is free from error so if it is free from error then there is no correction for that error so maybe like that simply i will write this is the pitch scale pitch line this is the head scale suppose zero to division of the head scale so when you know screw gauge the head scale has a 100 readings so if this is the circumstance when the movable tip of the screw is in close agreement with the so stud or fixed plug so the zero to division of the head scale is exactly coincides with the pitch line so in this instrument error is nil so you can say zero hsd so therefore correction is also nil zero hsd this is the one type of the screw gauge so you may get while doing the experiment so one more type of the screw gauge may be possible in that screw gauge when the movable tip of the screw is in close contact with the fixed plug is in close contact with the fixed plug suppose fifth division coincides so this is 4 3 2 1 0 1 2 3 4 9 5 like that 1 3 4 5 10 like that so which division you have to coincide this is zero to should coincide if it is free from error instead of that uh, which division coincides fifth division under this circumstance so error e should be positive error should be positive what extent it is positive five head scale divisions ahead it is therefore to make it is nil error should be nil you for obtain reading you have to foot Minus five H S D. This is the one more type of the screw gauge you may have while doing the practicals. So then, <coughs> the third type is under the same situation. I mean, when the movable tip of the screw is in comes in contact with the so movable tip of the screw is in contact with the uh, stud or fixed plug. Stud or fixed plug. Stud or fixed plug. <coughs> so instead of coinciding zeroth division it may be 95th division coincides 95 96 97 98 99 it is zero so 1 2 3 4 it is 90 like that here zeroth or 100th division should coincides 100th division should coincides instead of that 95th so 100 is less than greater than 95 95 is less than 100 with what extent minus 5 hsd minus 5 hsd therefore zero correction is plus 5 hsd to make error nil minus 5 plus 5 is zero this is or oh, this is the three possible types of a screw gauge we may use while doing the experiment by making use of a screw gauge so in this screw gauge there is no error when zero exactly matches with the pitch line 
when the zero of the head scale lies below the pitch line error is positive correction is negative when zero of the head scale lies above the pitch line error is negative correction is positive in all these three circumstances your <coughs> movable tip of the screw is comes in contact with the fixed plug this is how error should be note down and correction should be done so again what is least count what is least count means so it is a ratio it is a ratio of pitch to the number of hst number of head scale divisions on your head scale so you can say how many head scale divisions it may be 100 or 50 or anything else then what is a pitch means pitch means a constant distance usually how can you calculate the pitch means it is a ratio from distance uncovered on the pitch scale in millimeter to the number of divisions uh, number of rotations given to the head of the screw so in the next class uh, try to know how to calculate the pitch of the screw gauge with that how to find the least count and how to take the total reading so with this uh, we stop our discussion in the uh, next class uh, uh, within uh, 10 minutes i will complete this chapter and then try to concentrate with the next chapter thank you